Hello, I'm Naoki Mitsui from Nextnow Genbeha. Today I would like to introduce one example of UV LED simulations by means of Nextnow Plus Plus. Through this example, I would like you to see the brief overview of one of our simulation flows for general optical devices, which consists of trading a person current equations and semi-classical optics model. As the example, we will analyze the effect of electron blocking layer, which is often introduced to the current UV LED structures through the quantitative examination of internal quantum efficiency. Current UV LEDs suffer from very low external quantum efficiency compared to standard LEDs. It is especially low, like less than 1%, for shorter wavelengths, although they have the high potential to be used in disinfection applications, for instance. This external quantum efficiency consists of these two factors. Roughly speaking, internal quantum efficiency measures how much of current is consumed in the light emission from the active region. Light extraction efficiency, on the other hand, measures how much of the light emitted from the active region can be extracted to the outside. Both of internal quantum efficiency and light extraction efficiency owes to the low external quantum efficiency of UV LEDs. There are several factors that lead to the low IQE and low LEE in UV LEDs. Here we list some of them that can be analyzed by the optoelectronic simulation like Nexon or Plus Plus. IQE can be affected by the current overflow and the low hole conductivity, for instance. This effect can be well analyzed by the IQE calculation by means of Poisson sharing a current equation and semi-classical model for optical properties. On the other hand, one possible reason that causes the low LEE is the TE and TM polarization ratio of emitted light. This ratio can be calculated by the K.P method and quantum mechanical optics model that can include the dependence of aluminum content or strain. In the following, we will address the structure with so-called electron blocking layer, which is related to the issue of current overflow using these calculation scheme. The electron blocking layer is inserted between the quantum wave layers and p-type layers. Their conduction bandages are set higher than that of adjacent layers. This potential barrier caused by the electron blocking layer plays a role to prevent the electron current to overflow into the p-type layer, and eventually increases the electron densities captured in the quantum waves. Thus, we will simulate the simple LED structure that consists of n-type region, multi-quantum wave region, electron blocking layer, and p-type region. We vary the aluminum content in the blocking layer so that we can compare the results with higher blocking layer, lower blocking layer, and no blocking layer. Here we are using the weights and alloy compositions introduced in the publication of Hideki Hirayama. The corresponding input file is based on another sample input file made by Maria in Nextonano. Once the input file is imported into Nextonano Plus Plus, the preliminary calculations start to obtain the strain, band structure, piezo and piezoelectric charges for the subsequent simulations. Then the Poisson trading current equation start. First, Poisson equation calculates the electrostatic potential from the charge density. The electrostatic potential enters into the Schrodinger equation to get the energy levels and the wave functions of the charge carriers. These wave functions get occupied using a quasi Fermi level and Fermi-Dirac distribution to obtain the carrier densities. Then these two equations are iterated 
until the carrier densities have been converged. Once the converged carrier densities have been found, they enter into the current equation to update the quasi field metadata. Then the whole cycle is iterated until the converged solution for the quasi field metadata and the carrier densities have been found. These solutions are finally imported to the calculation of optical properties by either semi-classical or a quantum mechanical model. In this video, we solve the Poisson current equations instead of Poisson shielding current equations. It uses an approximation to get the carrier densities instead of solving shielding equation. In the semi-classical model for optical properties, which is used in our simulation here, the spontaneous emission rate is calculated by this approximation formula. And the other quantities such as stimulated emission rate, gain, and IQE are derived based on this spontaneous emission rate. This model provides fast and stable calculation, whereas it misses some information such as polarization dependencies that could be addressed by a quantum mechanical model. Now let's move on to the simulation results for the UV LED structure. Here we have the IQE results of our simulation. The calculations are repeated for each bias voltage in each structure with higher, lower, and no electron blocking layer. The left graph shows the bias voltage and IQE. We can see that the peak of IQE for higher blocking layer is larger than the case with that electron blocking layer, whereas it decreases when we introduce the lower blocking layer. Also, the right graph shows the relation between the current density and IQE. Here we can see that the introduction of blocking layers improves IQE for a wide range of current density. Next, we will analyze this improvement for detail. The internal quantum efficiency can be decomposed into these two efficiencies. The first part is the volume quantum efficiency that shows how much of recombination is radiative. In other words, this is the ratio of radiative recombination to the sum of radiative and non-radiative recombination. This VQE is also called as radiative efficiency. The second part is the injection efficiency that shows how much of the current is consumed by recombination, avoiding the current overflow. The left graph shows the volume quantum efficiency. By increasing the current densities, this efficiency is also increased. The introduction of blocking layers also improves this efficiency. The difference in carrier density distributions affects this improvement. On the other hand, injection efficiency decreases as the current density is increased. However, as in the case of volume quantum efficiency, the introduction of blocking layers improves this injection efficiency. What affects this is the current density distribution. The amount of steps in the current density distribution corresponds to the amount consumed by the recombination. Another interesting observation would be the comparison to long wavelength LED structures. The right graph shows the bias voltage and IQE for a similar LED structure, but for a wavelength of 1650 nm. We can see that the bias range where the IQE holds the peak value is around 0.4 electron volt in this long wavelength LED structure. However, in our UV LED structure here, the peak is much steeper and its range is less than 0.1 electron volt. Thus, it would be an uh, also interesting question how we can increase the stability of the peak in IQE for UV LEDs.
So here is the conclusions. In this video, we quantitatively estimated the UV LED characteristics using current Poisson equations and semi-classical model for optical properties. We could see that EVL improves both PQE and IE, which results in the improvement in the internal quantum efficiencies. We also found IQE peak in UV LEDs is less stable to bias voltage compared to long wavelength LED structures. What we have done is the comparison of IQEs with different barrier height of blocking layers. But once we can understand the mechanisms of IQE degradation, we can also use Nexon++ to optimize the structure in order to obtain the ideal characteristics of UV LEDs. Our Python package NexonPy is a useful tool for this optimization purpose. If you are interested in, you can see several related tutorials in our web manual. The input files and the Python script for this simulation are also available. So thank you for watching.